Hi, in this video we're going to improve the chart and screen in three ways. Firstly, the chart at the moment only shows the closed price, but our data, as you can see, has other price types in there, open, high, low, and so on. We're going to allow the report viewer to choose the price or prices they want to see on the chart. To do that, we're going to use field parameters. Before we can do that, however, we've got to make two improvements to the data model. The first is to create a set of explicit measures and to replace the implicit measures on the chart with those. The second is to put those explicit measures into their own measures table. So, let's get started. Let's remind ourselves quickly about what this chart represents. It shows the price, the close price, the price at the end of the trading day, and the volume traded of a particular company, M&G, an asset manager, over the last few years. We've got date on the x-axis. The blue line represents the close price. The red and green bars represent the volume traded, the number of shares traded in the market. If you want to have a look at how we built this, there is a particular video, but you don't need to watch that video to benefit from this one. This chart currently uses implicit measures, but what are they? If we have a look at the volume here, and if we click on it, we'll notice that it's an aggregation of the uh, the volume field, and we're, by default, we're summing it. Power behind, behind the scenes creates an implicit invisible measure, which it puts there. Likewise, if we look at close, it's also been aggregated uh, by sum. I'm going to argue, actually, that close is best done by averaging it and nothing particularly changes here because we've got a date axis and we've got one row per date the average is the sum in this particular case but if it was a weekly or a monthly then average makes better sense than close now field parameters can't use implicit measures they must use explicit measures so let's go and create some explicit measures let's create an explicit measure for the volume we'll call it volume traded make that a bit bigger so we can see it we're going to create a measure called volume traded and it's simply going to be the sum of the volume field I'll also create a measure called close price and I'll make that equal to the average of the close price field and now we can see our close price and our volume traded measures in our field list now let's put those two explicit measures on the chart. To do that, it'll be useful if for the moment I switch my legend on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take volume traded, put it on the column axis, and I'm going to remove volume. And we've got that volume traded there. Likewise, I'm going to take close price, I'll put it on the line axis. We can see that it's exactly the same as the implicit measure, the average of the close and I'll take off the, the implicit measure. So now our chart uses both explicit measures. The, finally, what we can do is we can hide those two implicit measures because we're never going to put them onto a chart. So I'm just going to come over here to my volume and to my close, and I'm going to hide those. So now we won't see them in the field list when we go to the report pane. I just paused the video for a few seconds while I created a few other measures exactly the same as the close price. So I created adjusted close price, high, low, and open. The next thing I want to do is to organize these measures into their own measures table. To do that, I need to create a table, and I'm going to do that with enter data. This is usually good for creating small lookup tables, internal lookup tables, but I'm going to create a table called calculations. I'm going to click on load and that will create uh, a table with no rows and one column called column one in which we're going to hang all our measures onto it. Let's move our measures into the calculation table. We'll start with adjusted close price. As I click on the measure I get the context ribbon up and in there I can click on the home table and move it from MNG to our calculations table. I can do this one by one in the report pane, or I can come over to the model pane and I can actually use drag and drop. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click 
on all my measures and I'm just going to drag them into the calculations table. Once I've done that, I can actually remove the column one column. And if we go back and we have a quick look at our chart, our report pane, we can see we've got all our calculations in this uh, calculations table, this measure table. It might be a bit of an overkill to do that when we've only got six or seven calculations, but as we grow the model, we might end up with 60 or 70 calculations, and then it becomes a very useful way of organizing our calculations. Now let's create our field parameters. It's also going to create a slicer, so I'll put, create a bit of space to put our slicer there. I'm going to go into modeling, and then new parameter, and this time choose fields the name of the parameter I'm going to call it my price parameter and I'm going to add the fields I want to choose or all those different price types just to close close high low and open notice it says add slicer to page I'm going to create and what we can see is we've got a calculated table here called price parameter we can even look at the DAX. Since it's got DAX, we can change it in any way that we like, but that's probably a topic for a, another video. It's also created this uh, slicer here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to position the slicer and I'll just make it a bit nicer by making it a horizontal slicer. At the moment, clicking on that slicer does nothing. So the next thing that we're going to do is to wire it up to the chart. If I come back to the chart here and look at the line axis, it's got close price. But in fact, if I remove that and I put on price parameter, the column from this new DAX table, this there, what we can see is now if we click on close price, we can see the close price. And if we click on, for example, adjusted close price, we can see now two prices if we want. And we can see there's quite an interesting relationship between the uh, close price and adjusted close price. I hope you've enjoyed this video. In our next videos, we're going to continue with this case study with this data set. One video will be to replace that rather clunky date slicer with a lot of really lovely preset radio buttons, last month, last year, year to date, and so on. Another will be to take that date axis and make it a year or a quarter or a month and allow the user to do that. So I hope to see you on those videos and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already.